I'm going to talk about the orange pill for you fellas, my productive members of society. If you haven't taken the orange pill, you probably should. Uh, hopefully you'll want to after the end of this video. And if you still don't want to take the orange pill after this video, then I don't know what to tell you. So what is the orange pill and why you should take it? We'll talk about it here in a second. So let's get into it. So for those who don't know, the orange pill is just the equivalent of taking the red pill from the movie The Matrix, right? The analogy is there. You saw the thumbnail. I, hope, I would hope that you would, you know, understand that. But if not, that's what that's from. Um, and basically, the idea that the standard for value and the standard for currency or wealth or whatever can be based off of technology such as Bitcoin as opposed to the antiquated technology that we are using today. All right. And what are we using today? We're using a fiat monetary system. And uh, fact number one is that no fiat system has lasted in the last 300 years, all right? The average lifespan of a fiat monetary system is approximately 27 years, but the shortest lived one was one month. And if you guys wanna go on Google and do some research, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about, but there, there's been fiat systems that have lasted only one month and it was already over. It was zero, zero value, straight to zero. A fact is that we haven't had a single fiat monetary system last productively in the last 300 years. Uh, and actually, I guess I should have prefaced that by we've only been using fiat monetary systems for the last 300 years, and not a single one has has fully survived in a sovereign way. All right, and what is a fiat monetary system? Basically, it's just the concept that you can print money out of thin air and with specific strategic manipulation, you can adjust and control inflation and deflation and you can have a automated economy, all right? If you guys don't know, in 1971, Richard Nixon took us off the gold standard, all right? So this summer actually marks the 50th year anniversary for the United States fiat monetary system. And the United States fiat monetary system, the United States, the United States currency, so the United States dollar, is actually the world reserve currency. And what does that mean? That means basically that if other countries want to participate in trade, they have to use the United States dollar in order to get good X, Y, or Z. All right. Now that's changing, and there's countries like Russia and other countries that are already starting to like sell their oil or buy oil and stuff in euro dollars and stuff like that. But for the most part, uh, the reason that the United States was able to accomplish that was because the petrodollar. So basically, after the United States went into the Middle East and you know did their business, um, they pretty much forced everyone to buy and sell oil in United States currency. So that being said, uh, and no fiat system has lasted in the last 300 years, we're at our 50th anniversary of our fiat system. And it, it's pretty apparent, like people are starting to like notice, even at average, average, everyday normal people are starting to notice like, hey, something's not right with, something's not right with the way that our money system works, right? Um, so <laughs> point number one, again, to reiterate, no fiat system has lasted in the last 300 years since the inception of the fiat monetary system. Speaking of our fiat monetary system, as you can see here, I wrote the Fed, specifically Jerome Powell, has admitted on camera in the last year that basically the system that they have, they the, they, they know that they cannot keep it afloat. Um, if you want to go and Google and, and search, I think you can search like Jerome Powell admits we can't keep printing money. Basically, the guy has admitted that they, he, they know that they can't keep printing money and that they know that it can't last forever. And they know that it's gonna to have to change to something. They just don't know what that something is. And in the last like 100 years, um, every time this problem has come around, we've basically, uh, it, the problem has been acting kind of like a sinking ship or a ship with a hole in it. And if you have a, a ship with a hole in it, normally the logical thing to do would be to go and get the hole plugged or to just throw the ship out and just get a new one, right? We haven't been doing that. We've basically just been taking buckets and like scooping the water out of the ship. And every time um, we do that, the hole just gets bigger 
and instead of just replacing the hole or getting a new ship, we're actually just getting a larger bucket and just scooping it out, right? So uh, a, a, aside from the fact that it's a, and it's a fact that fiat monetary systems do not last, they always go to zero, uh, our own federal chair, our own Fed chair, Jerome Powell, knows and admits that this is just, it, it's, it's, it's not gonna, not gonna work. Now we'll actually talk about the orange pill, all right? Um, we used to have our trades based off of gold, right? And it was easy to do because, you know, the Spanish conquistadors could go and trade with gold to another country for whatever good that, or service that they wanted. Um, and gold was pretty much recognized as this, like, um, basically this magical shiny yellow rock that had value and was scarce. And since everybody recognized and accepted it as a form of payment, as a form of um, wealth, uh, wealth transfer from person A to person B or country A to country B, or preservation of wealth, because gold is ideally supposed to always be valuable, um, that's what we, we used to do. And the orange pill proposes that we utilize some sort of technology in order to get that same goal accomplished. I won't say what technology will be used. I have my own beliefs and my own theories, but uh, I'll, I'll save that from being labeled the conspiracy theorist and just keep that in my head. But since we already know about Bitcoin, let's just say that it is Bitcoin that's going to become, or that can take the place of what gold has done, no longer really anymore, but gold has done in the past. Um, why is this beneficial? Why is it uh, a positive as opposed to us having this U.S. petrodollar that's kind of like the reserve currency, is that first and foremost, and I think this is really important because like no one ever really points this out, but Bitcoin is free to trade, all right? That that means that obviously like you, you're free to trade derivatives of gold or whatever you want. I mean, you're free to go and sell gold and silver too. But um, how easy is it to go and like immediately liquidate um, $100 million of gold. Is anyone anyone here, uh, have, have y'all ever done that? If you do, let me know, drop 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 a comment. Let me know how, how easy that was for you. But I think you guys get my point. Uh, Bitcoin is free to trade instantly, immediately, and everywhere, as long as you have access to internet. And even if, um, you, you can't really block, countries can't really block or ban cryptocurrency. They, what they really do is they, they ban themselves from it. But regardless of the point, uh, Bitcoin is, just, just understand this, Bitcoin is free to trade unlike things like bonds and gold, all right? And what that does is that gives us a true gauge of the inflationary impact right now in the current monetary system. And it also gives us a true gauge in the value of Bitcoin, all right? Because the people are the ones who are trading it. Now, yeah, there's bots and there's institutions trading it and there's whales too. And there's definitely governments trading it, whether they, they're gonna admit it or not. Um, but the fact that it's in this giant open ecosystem, kind of like the ocean, you can think about the ocean. Uh, people from Korea, people from the United States, everyone can just get on a ship and go in the ocean, right? But the ocean itself is, is unclaimed by everybody. It's its own separate ecosystem that literally cannot be claimed. I mean, you could technically claim that you own part of the ocean, but uh, I mean, that the water will just move and then it'll circulate around the world and just go somewhere else, right? So that's that's the uh, that's the big point there is that Bitcoin is free to trade, all right? And it, it, it reflects its value because of that. Brings me to my next point is technology has already changed everything, all right? Literally everything, um, especially since the boom of the internet, but technology and it's it, it's unstoppable. It's, you can't put the toothpaste back in the, in the tube, right? Technology has changed every industry, every person's lives, for, for, mo for better and for worse, mostly for better. But technology has changed everything we have so far, and it's really hardly had an impact on our monetary system. Um, I'm trying to think about uh, information about the SWIFT payment processing system. I really don't know a lot of it on the top of my head, but I know that it's from the 1970s. It's really antiquated and um, it's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not a good 
form of technology for monetary transfer from point A to point B for, for anything, all right? If you guys, if, to save time, if you guys want to learn about the split payment processing system, just go on Google and, and Google it, all right? So to reiterate on that point, technology has already changed everything in the history of mankind. And so if you think that it's not going to change the monetary system, you're very wrong. And so, again, when I was talking about uh, Bitcoin being potentially the new standard of value and or trade and or reserve currency, whatever you want to label it, um, like talk, to that, talk about that again. So instead of just thinking about Bitcoin, every time I say Bitcoin, you can think cryptocurrencies in general because there's many of them and they all have many of their own use cases, just like there's many different currencies currently in the world and there's also even back with like gold and precious metals, like we have gold, silver, Platinum, uranium, plutonium. I don't even know if that's an actual. Uh, I don't even know if plutonium is actually a. a uh, uh, I know it's value, but I don't know if it's even used for trade at all. But diamonds, gems, rubies, whatever, all that stuff, right? So you can think of multiple crypto cryptocurrencies kind of in that same category, right? And why are they better than what we currently have, which is just a fiat monetary system that just prints money out of thin air? Uh, First and foremost, because you can self-custody them, okay? And what that means is, yeah, obviously, I, you can have a safe and you can put cash in it and you can put cash in your wallet, but is it safe there? Not really, right? Um, and in the year 2021, how viable is it to pay for cash for, like, your car note or for your mortgage or for things that are online? You, you can't just take that cash out of your out of your safe and then just send it through thin air, right? What do you have to do? You have to go through a third party, which is a bank, right? And um, I really don't like banks. And I'm sure, hope, I'm sure uh, I think most people here are starting to realize that banks are kind of just like a, uh, it's what seems to be a, a Ponzi scheme. But the point is I can keep my crypto anywhere I want. Um, and I am, this, I am the custodian of that crypto. So when it's time for me to do whatever I want with it, I don't have to go to a third party, all right? And please, Mr. Third Party, can you please allow me to move my crypto from point A to point B? You don't have to even worry about that. The only reason you put your crypto in the custody of a third party is possibly because if they benefits you in some way, shape, or form. So like if it pays you interest or you get something out of it, right? Another point here I'd like to make is that Bitcoin and crypto actually promote peace. Now I know it sounds like super lovey-dovey, uh, but I, I mean it, I'm serious, and I can explain it, all right? Just give me a second, and I'll explain it. So if you go back to uh, caveman days, and caveman uh, John wanted to uh, have the meat from caveman Grog, and caveman John was stronger than caveman Grog, he could just simply go up to caveman Grog, plop him across the head with a club, and just take the meat from him, right? Simple enough, right? Um, and the same thing can be done with money nowadays. Money actually, money actually incentivizes people to be able to create and to not only create but to also enact in crimes, right? And and that's not to say that you know you shouldn't try to be as strong as Caveman John and and build yourself up in a, in a manner to where you're going to be um, self sufficient enough to protect yourself, but. How many, how many caveman Johns would it take to defend off against, I don't know, um, the United States government or the Korean government? It'd take a lot, right? And throughout history, anytime a government has had to succumb to um, getting something that they desperately needed and it wasn't willingly being handed over, we know what happens, right? War, right? And if I have a building with $100 million of gold inside of it, right? and the government really wants that gold, and the government needs that gold, they could just drop a bomb on the building, and I would be dust, the whole entire building would be dust, and the gold would probably need to be like cleaned, but they would have the gold, right? Even if I'm dead, they can grab it. it if you have Bitcoin or crypto, they can kill me, and they can take out the whole entire building, but they'll never get, they'll never get the digital assets, right? So it, it actually will incentivize people to not partake in crime, and it will have to incentivize the people that need the funds for the things they want to be done in a more humanitarian manner. So if the government is needing people to pay taxes, they're gonna have to 
properly incentivize them to do so because they can't just go and steal people's crypto. They can lock them up, throw them in jail, they can kill them, they can starve them, but if they don't have the private keys, they're never going to have their hands in the digital asset, right? And then no one will, and it'll be lost in the space-time continuum forever and ever and ever. I mean, maybe blockchain Jesus can get access to it, but not anyone else. And finally, uh, a third and final benefit, and by the way, guys, there's like a quadrillion different benefits. Quadrillion's not really a number, I know, duh. Uh, but the, these are just three big ones that I think that people don't really think or talk about, right? Uh, except for the self-custody one, but it promotes sovereign individuals, right? And what I mean by that is this technology can be used to kind of like no longer require the need or have people who are willing to work, willing to do positive things for society, willing to contribute to society and accomplish tasks and services that are needed, it allows these people to become sovereign individuals because they'll no longer have to, to depend off of a nation state, off of a company, off of anything really. Um, if they were going to partake in those things, they would have to be incentivized properly into doing so as opposed to just having them forced to do it, which is kind of like what we're going through right now, all right? Um, and I, I use the term sovereign individuals because of the book, The Sovereign Individual. Uh, you guys should read that book. It's pretty based. And in fact, you don't have to read the whole thing. If you just read the preface and the first chapter, it'll be enough in there to kind of cover like everything that I've talked about so far without even mentioning Bitcoin. I think they talk about like cryptocurrency like because when the book was written, there was no real cryptocurrency yet, I believe. Um, and they had mentioned digital currencies being a possible outlet to this happening. So yeah, to reiterate, Again, just to go over some brief, brief uh, facts here. Fiat systems do not last, all right? And obviously ours is not working, all right? We know that even their own, even their own government admits that it's not working. Uh, Bitcoin is free to trade, so its actual value is a true representation of what its actual value should be. Technology has changed everything else in mankind so far. And if you think that it's not gonna change the monetary system, and much more you are, um, yeah, I don't know what to say to you. Uh, Bitcoin, you can self-custody it. It doesn't require you to have to go through some third-party Ponzi scheme to, to, and that charges you money in order to uh, move your money from point A to point B, and you don't have to go and beg for access to your money, all right? It promotes peace. I'm serious, it promotes peace, it's not a joke. And it actually promotes sovereign individualism, all right? So all in all, if you haven't taken the orange pill yet, I highly suggest you do, um, because if you don't take it now, you're gonna be forced to take it in the next uh, 10, year, 10 to 20 years minimum. Uh, and be willing to, be willing to um, have to accept that if you came in too late, then you, you deserved where, where you got in at, all right? I, I don't know if that 100% makes sense to you guys, but the people who came in early have already benefited from it. Um, and they deserve that. And the people who were gonna go in late deserve what they got because they got in where they got in. So um, I, I also suspect that a lot of people that uh, are unwanting to be sovereign individuals, and, and, I, and I'm not trying to talk down about a class of people or certain people in, in general, but people who just really aren't willing to work and don't wanna work, um, people that just accept uh, governmental income and don't really have uh, the desire to do any better, I have a strong feeling that in the future that those people are going to absolutely be repulsed by the orange pill um, because it kind of represents something to them that it, it kind of pushes them even further away from um, living a life that they want to live without having to work. I hope that makes sense. I hope that wasn't too rough and I hope that wasn't, um, I hope they didn't offend anybody. So geez, if I offended you, I apologize. Uh, if I did offend you, drop a comment, let me know. Let's see if we can clarify. And that's it. Take the orange pill or uh, you'll have to be forced to take it in the future. Later.